According to Nexago, who sponsored this video, their new TriVision Ultra Portable Projector uses AI to automatically keystone, automatically detect screens, automatically align your image, and even automatically detect if you are looking into its laser output in order to protect your eyes. So I'll tell you what, Nexago, either your product is gonna look real great by the end of this video, or I'm not gonna be able to tell the difference. I'm gonna try it, the eye protection. Oh, good. <laughs> of course, nobody's gonna care about their perfectly aligned image and working eyes if the image isn't any good. So it's a 4K projector. It comes with a factory calibration report and they claim that in SDR, it is able to achieve a Delta E of less than one. It supports Dolby Vision and HDR10 and uses their Tri-LED laser technology to achieve better color accuracy, wider color gamut, and greater brightness, achieving 2600 lumens according to the spec sheet. In the back, we've got two of the three HDMI 2.1 inputs, one supporting eARC, one supporting game, right? It's got game. Actually, apparently it really does. It's rated at 4.2 milliseconds of input lag in game mode. We've also got uh, USB if you want to play your files or whatever else, as well as 3.5 millimeter audio out, SPDIF, a network jack, and a third HDMI port. Da -da -da -da. Nope, not there. I'll find it. It is in there. I was right. I just need a screwdriver. If only there was somewhere I could get a screwdriver. Wait, I know, Home Depot. No, shit. LTT store, that's the one. Anyway, there's a third HDMI 2.1 input in the bottom. There's both, oh, that's cool. You've got a little micro USB for power, and then you've got an HDMI input for your fire stick. This is a really smart way of delivering a smart display without saddling your customers with, you know, whatever random Android skin you happen to be using. Instead, you can use whatever random Android skin Amazon happens to be using. Now I think it's time for us to fire it up. Hmm. This feels like there's more stuff in here, but I see foam at the bottom. Ah! Foam and power cable. And also, dang it, what is in here that's so heavy? What is this? Good Lord! Wow, a 300 watt power brick. Okay, I guess that's how they get the light output, with the power brick. Curiously, there's no link to Netflix or Disney Plus or Prime or anything like that. So what are the Vegas odds on me losing my vision in the next five minutes here? I guess I'll just be chief officer. Chief officer. <laughs> <laughs> Have you talked about the weight yet? I'm doing my best. These things take time. Oh, the weight. I get it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty light. 11.46 pounds, wow. Yep, that feels like 11.46 pounds. All right, great. Here we go, let's plug it in. Uh, it's a bit of a hack though, because the power brick probably weighs another three pounds. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> okay, I need a longer power cord. This is the thing about every projector setup. It's super elegant until you need to power the projector. But hey, look, if this thing's as impressive as it is on paper, maybe it'll be worth it. This is my companion brick. Let's fire this bad boy up. Oh, and we're probably also gonna need a screen, which it should detect. Let's see how that goes. Oh, I meant to mention the speakers earlier. Dual 15 watt speakers. They've actually got a little bit of rumble. Now it doesn't have a quarter 20 mount, but no feet. So you're gonna be using books. There we go. Oh, you got a light stand. Oh, that'll do. Perfect. This will help us at least make sure that the screen is within the bounds of what we can hit with the projector. So. No, stop. It's a setting you can turn off. I'm gonna turn off the automatic stuff for now. I do still wanna see if it'll work because normally I would have a little bit more flexibility in terms of where I'm placing the thing. Oh, oh. crap. I've ruined everything. Whole game over. Okay, this is now a solvable problem because the size of the projected image is greater than the size of the screen. Let's see if it can dial it in. Here we go. Turn on the automatic everything. Speaking of, have I mentioned the maximum screen size they say they support? 150, 150 inches. Yeah, the automatic screen detection seems to be aspirational at this point. All right, there we go, we got it dialed in. Hey, we should probably turn off some lights so we can actually see what this thing looks like. Image parameters, let's go, ooh. Actually, let's do super bright first. Super bright, wow. 
Make sure the vents aren't blocked. Make sure the temperature does not go above 77 Fahrenheit and do not turn the volume above 40%. Dang! We in super bright mode. Okay, let's not bother with that. Let's go with uh, Vision Night and let's turn some lights off. Big shout out Nexigo here. They've got their motion estimation, motion compensation feature that's like highlighted on the box, but is off by default. Thank you. <laughs> that's the correct setting for that. It has a 24 FPS mode, so it'll go into 24 FPS native, which is pretty cool. There's all the projector settings you would expect. So you can have it rear mounted or ceiling mounted. Uh, you can configure it. So if you're aiming at a white wall, it'll help compensate for that. But what's cool is that this is just a display menu. It's not actually smart in any way without that fire stick that we put in it before. And I actually kind of prefer this approach. It means it'll never be outdated. I get a little bit of rainbow effect. If I look at the lens off axis, I shift my eyes around, but I'm not picking it up on the screen. I wonder why that is. Speaking of which, do I have the eye protection thing on? Seeing how the screen detection and all of that worked, I think my confidence is a little lower, but hey, let's give it a shot. Is it gonna turn off if I look at it? Automatic obstacle avoidance. Wait, so what does obstacle avoidance mean? Like if there was a lamp or the light switch or something on the wall, I would try to avoid it. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, we don't have that. We have a screen because we are smart. And if we're spending this much on a projector, we should probably get at least a basic screen. <laughs> I hope it works. Oh. <laughs> you broke it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> nice. At this price, it doesn't need any of the AI bullshit to impress me. It's 1100 in their early access and it's 1900 once that's passed. So if this even remotely holds up to the kind of image quality that the specs say it should have, uh, it's gonna be pretty compelling even though you do have to manually <laughs> do the keystone. Man, it must be rough being a sponsor for this channel because you're like, yeah, man, I'm just gonna like sponsor an ad and then we're gonna like test your features. And if they're bad, we're totally gonna have that in the video. It is what it is. But hey, that's how you guys know that if we say something's good, it's actually good. So HDMI 3, let's go. Actually, now that I've got some more white elements on screen, I take back what I said before, I can pick up the rainbow effect looking at the screen. So if you're super sensitive to it, then you will notice it on this. Not bad. The blacks are not the deepest I've ever seen, but it's got enough brightness that the perceived contrast is still quite high. Especially at that early bird price, this is a lot of image. Whoa, we weren't even at 4K either. So this should be quite a bit sharper. Man, and we've even still got a fair bit of light in here. 3D settings? Seriously, it supports 3D, hilarious. For all y'all that are out there with your 3D projection setups. 1100 bucks, hey? And it's a pretty painless setup. You just plunk it on a thing. Well, <laughs> and then manually keystone it. You know, Keystone used to be pretty much unusable because the light spill was so strong. But on these newer projectors where you can barely even perceive it, even if you know what you're looking for, it's pretty usable. Also, the improved resolution helps, right? Like when you were using Keystone on a 720p projector, you were giving up a lot of the very limited resolution you had. But now that it's 4K, yeah, you give up a little bit of resolution no big deal. Crab rave, let's go! It's like I said before, not the highest clarity I've ever heard, but it's actually got some kick to it, which makes sense when you look at the size of the drivers, but was not expected given that most projectors have absolutely none. Let's play some games though. Can it hold up in games? You can really see how much light spill there is in this room from even just the cracks in the windows because they can see the shadow of your camera arm thing on the screen. <laughs> so everything you're looking at then, remember, this is under suboptimal conditions for sure. Like, this is really vibrant. So we're plugged into HDMI 2, which is the like game port. And let's just go down here. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's cool, okay. So before I was a little confused because it was grayed out. I had wanted to like change it to HDMI 2.1, but it only lets you select the highest version that is supported and then you can fall back to a lower version if you want. That works 
exactly like I would hope. Okay, so enable low latency is not on, even though we're plugged into the game port, but that's gonna cost us 24p cinema mode, 3D mode, and keystone correction. Not having keystone could be a bummer. Wait, keystone is totally still working. I am just not gonna question it. <laughs> keystone, 100% working. Now I'm pretty good at this game. Who's using this controller? Which game are you good at? This one? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because you've told me you're good at games before. And I am. Were you good at the ones you told me you were good at? Uh, editor, pull that up. I don't even remember how to pick a character. Well, I'm blue. Okay, <laughs> I guess I'm pink. <laughs> Got him. Uh, okay, standard match. Okay, let's go. Oh no. No, I played this with a PlayStation controller on the Ludwig stream. The controls are different. Oh, uh, womp womp. Oh no, I'm gonna get wrecked. It's it's hard for me to tell, because I... Okay, hold on, I'm gonna stop using the analog stick. Use the analog stick? Come yeah, on, man. why not? Ah! What is even happening right now? Big W's, that's what's happening. Oh man, I thought I was good at this game. Uh, okay, let's try something where I'm gonna be a little more easily able to tell what the input lag is like. It actually does not feel very good. It didn't feel good, no. No. Um, <laughs> so I need to I need to figure out if this is a settings issue. Okay, we figured it out. To get the super low latency mode working, you need to be running in 1080p and 240 hertz. Now, I don't think the PlayStation supports 240 hertz. So we're hooking up a computer. Let's go. Okay, now that I'm hooked up to a PC, I think I figured out the latency thing. It is much better in 240 hertz, 1080p, but it isn't 4.2 milliseconds. Nexago seems to be conflating the amount of time that each frame is being displayed with the input lag, which is not how that works. It's okay, but if you're playing games that require pixel perfect timing, this is not the world's fastest gaming projector. It's also not the world's most expensive gaming projector. So with that in mind, the compromises do make sense, but Nexago needs to clean up that messaging on their site. Hey guys, Future Linus here. Turns out we were right. With low latency mode off and Keystone on, the latency of this projector gets as high as 35 to 50 milliseconds, depending on the operating mode. But with low latency on and Keystone off, we saw it get as low as about five to eight milliseconds. So, uh... Let's try that with Counter-Strike. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, this feels great. Like, awesome. I mean, I'm still not any good at games, but yeah, this is awesome. This is like super low. In conclusion, thanks Nexago for sponsoring this video of the TriVision Ultra. It really does offer a very interesting combination of features, portability, decent performance, and especially at the early bird pricing, a very compelling value. So you guys can find the link in the video description if you wanna check it out.